This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad to be in it. Come on, say it with me. Let's go. This is a new day, a new day, and it's going to be God's will and God's way. And we have our, my dear friend, we love him. <laughs> oh, bo, bo, bo. You know what? A lot of things has been happening in our world, not just in our United States, but in our world. Hallelujah. Watch what's going to take place. This is going to be awesome. Now, I'm going to bring my dear friend Bo on because uh, I just, we all love him. I mean, he is a timeline man of God. Okay? Remember, Bo doesn't call himself a prophet, but he's a timeline. That's, you know, Ezekar, the tribe of Ezekar. They knew the times and had an idea of where God was going. Uh, how what God was doing. And we want to be ahead of the things that are going on in this world. Nothing should ever take us by surprise. Come on, Brother Bo. Come on up here, Brother Bo. God bless you. Come on. Whoa, there he is. Manny, Bo, thank you for doing? having me back. And I look forward to chatting and speaking with you. Looking forward to listening and chatting with all the viewers. And uh, what an exciting time. Strange July has passed and we have had an attempted assassination of a president, Donald Trump. Right. Strange That's July right. brought the hottest day on the planet ever recorded on the 21st of July. Wow. Strange really? July specifically brought the stepping down of Biden. And on a biblical date, we're going to go through this, like you talked earlier about analyzing God's timeline. Mm -hmm. So Biden stepped down precisely the day he was supposed to, based on scripture. Come on. Come, Come on. on. The, like, what do we say? We're living in not political times, but biblical times. So everything's That's happening right. on the biblical mark. And so we're watching everything unfold. Or we're watching the Kim Clement prophecy. He spoke about strange July. Okay, but then he also said summer will be the mediator between spring and fall, so the fall can do its work in America. Now, if I were to ask you what a mediator is, Manny, the simplest definition that would make sense to everybody is an intermediary point. It's a transition point. That's what a mediator is. So it's a mm. it's a middle point between two kingdoms. You're gonna like this, Manny. So. An inter so God, uh, summer will be the mediator between spring and fall, so the fall can do its work in America. So if summer's the mediator, we're still in summer because it doesn't end until September 20th. Summer doesn't end until September 20th. So if summer's the mediator, the mediator would be a transition point between two kingdoms. What did you say, Manny? What's rising? The rise of whose kingdom? God's kingdom, God's which kingdom. brings the glory that's written on your hat. See, when God's kingdom rises, so does his glory. Well, it, it rises because of the appearance of his glory on earth. So when the glory manifests, Babylon can't stand in the light. Because the light exposes the deals done in darkness. So That's what are right. we hearing? What are you saying, Manny? That God's going to do the great reveal. He's going to reveal all the deals done in dark. Because Babylon's secrets get revealed when God's kingdom rises or is Come birthed. On. Come on. So this is the time we're living in right now. So we've been waiting for this. You know, there was potential way we thought it could have been last year. But it's so clear that Christians... You'll see the revelation that God told me on calculation from literally the Mayflower to Daniel 12, 7, and it specifically mm. is calling out the start of September for the start of the birth of God's kingdom. So we are wow. this close for everything to begin. Uh, and then September 20th onwards is the fall time. And uh, the fall is going to do its work in America. And what, what work is there to do? The exposure. What is truth? 
Truth is what destroys evil. So what's coming out? Truth. So all of this is biblical. It's biblical timing because Babylon cannot stand when God's light shines and God's light shining is going to expose all the deals that were done in darkness in Babylon's kingdom. So that's what's going on. And we get to watch it all. Saints, remember, what's the good news? God's news. Come on. What's the good news? God's news. A lot has been happening, Brother Bo. We are just, biblical times is just right before. We're, I mean, I, I know it's just not just me. It's not just Bo. It's not just uh, uh, some, the prophets uh, that are just excited about uh, what's happening. And, and you know, we, every one of us should be excited. You know, I, I believe that Israel was excited when they were in Egypt. And Moses was calling the things out, you know, those plagues out against the wicked. I'm sure that their Israel's, they, you know, they were being excited. Look at look at the times we're living in. We're living in biblical times. Every time Moses goes to Pharaoh, a plague comes on Egypt. And guess what? Egypt economy was crashed, but that economy and 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 can and where the uh, Israelites were, they were fine. They had light, they had food, they had water, they had everything they needed. And so we're living in those days where we're going to see the separation, you know, of the tares and the weeds. And I'm talking about, you know, those that are living in darkness, those that want to live in the light, the light of God, the light of God. There's a, there's a reason why God spoke and said, make this hat glory days, not gloomy days, because he knew that the world was going to display gloomy. But God said, oh no, it's glory. Because I got plans for my people. I have plans. In Bo, I'm telling you, the world is unstable right now. You think? <laughs> you know, and, 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 and the way they see it. I'm not saying that now. When I say unstable, I'm talking about through their eyes. Yeah. Not to God's eyes, because they are right now in heaven celebrating what God is doing and what he's about to do and what God allows. These last four years, we have learned so much, Brother Bo. We have learned so much. And so much is also going to be learned. Well, I have a question for you, which um, I would like you to answer based on scripture. So, yes. based on the Bible, which you know better than I do, so thank you so much. My question to you is, when did Moses start fulfilling God's plan? Meaning that he left, he fled, he fled Egypt. He was then in yes. the wilderness, right? Uh huh. And then finally, he's like, you know, the, the mountain kept rumbling and rumbling and rumbling. And finally, he's like, I'm going to go up there because I want to know why God's not doing anything. I'm going to go have a little chat with him. Right? God's like, I'm going to go and talk to God or that God on top of that mountain because why is he not? Think about this. Why is he not doing something? We've been in bondage for four, my, you know, Israel. So we have been in bondage for 400 years. When is that God on that mountain going to do something? I'm going to go have a little talk with him. It's what happened, right, Manuel? Well, and God then, told... and then just, just before you continue, and then he, he goes up Sinai and then expand upon this. Two things had to happen. He had to take the sandals off of his feet and he had to go low to the ground to bow before God. Please continue. Tell me that I'm wrong or expand upon what I'm saying. Well, I, uh, saints I'm, and brother bro, I'm going to expand upon this. You see, God works in what? Not his time and his season is above us. Okay. Time and season and this just as Bo spoke earlier in the day, uh, earlier 10 minutes ago, what did he say? He said, 
when Biden stepped down, it was it, it was according to the biblical timeline. Same thing. When God called Moses to, for the first time to his recollection, the burning bush, it was a burning bush. He called Moses. The Bible said he called him twice. And Moses says, look, something's burning and it's not being consumed. And let me go see this sight. And as Moses was approaching, the Lord said, stop. Take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Moses takes his shoes off, bows. And the scripture says, Brother Bo, he couldn't look upon God. So as he was hearing God, he couldn't look. And God was explaining to him the covenant promise that he made to his to Moses' forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he says at the time is now a fulfillment to bring them out of bondage, out of bondage to a land flowing with milk and honey. He makes this very clear. He says, I'm sending you, Moses. When Moses tried to do something 40 years prior, it was what? Premature. This is the reason why things didn't happen the way we, we thought it was going to happen four years ago. It was what? Premature. Wow. Now, of course, we didn't have to wait 400 years, but <laughs> more like four years. But during the time Moses went, God didn't deliver them the minute Moses stepped foot in Egypt. He says, wait a minute. Let me do some things. Let me expose some of the things that needs to be exposed. You're going to come out of Egypt. And you're going to come out with wealth. And you're going to come out with health. And you're going to come out with the promise that I spoke to your forefathers. But I must do some exposure. So you can witness the evil in this world that I'm trying to expose. God didn't want them to get comfortable in Egypt. He wanted them to get comfortable in the promised land. So Bo, what you were saying regarding Moses time frame and I know um you had um oh wait it, it disappeared you got to bring it back up again right so what I want to ask you one last question and we'll play the video yes so when after this event happened Moses came down Sinai but what happened to Moses on Sinai in the presence of God he was baptized by fire was he not and God, he came no down idea. looking different and this is all over scripture oh, oh okay. okay okay so expand okay. This upon is, this, that this, this, just, let's let's just go okay. line by line here on oh, exodus okay bo is talking about this is what she, he's talking about he is talking about the second visitation on mount sinai when his face was glowing that's what Bo was talking about. Okay, that was after he brought them, brought them out of Egypt. And God spent 40 days with Moses. And that was a time of fellowship, a time of when Moses was asking questions. Lord, I don't want to go any further. If your presence is not with us, all of that. And then, you know, God's Lord said, I mean, Moses said, Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. And the then the Lord said, come up tomorrow morning, just you. And God's presence and glory went by Moses and, and took over. And then his face grew. His face was just glowing. So there was a presence on Moses that no one could explain. And Moses didn't even realize it. They told him, your face is glory. And at that time, Moses had to put a veil over his face because it would dim down, dim down until he gets back into the presence of God. So that's what he's talking about. But there was something took place. Yeah, a, a baptism and a presence and a, just a move of God. Right. 
That's what I wanted to have you expand upon because my yeah, point yeah. is, and that's Exodus, when you're in that's the presence Exodus of God, and yes. when you're in, in the presence of God, you change because that, that's what is baptism. Baptism is a death to life. When you're baptized to fire, your face changes. It's just when you're in the presence of the Lord, things change in you. Now, when you watch the video, you'll see the prophecy of Kim Clement. It says very specifically that Trump will return to office as a praying president. Why is that important? Because when he comes back to office as a praying president, something must have happened to him before his, in between his two terms. Let's have a listen because I want you, while you're listening to this, know that the first thing words out of Trump's mouth were after they try to assassinate him, you can hear in the background, get my shoes, get my shoes, because what happened to his shoes? They flew off while he was on the ground like Moses. Have a listen. Trump shall become a trumpet, says the Lord. No, you didn't hear me. Trump shall become a trumpet. Are you listening to me? Now God says a president that I will bring into the White House. And they will say he is ungodly. He does not know God. But ah, ah, even as Jesus disguised himself for the great feast, so I have disguised this man's heart. Listen to the word of the Lord. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms. A president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. I will put him in office and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord of hosts. He fell to his knees during this time frame and he started worshiping the Lord. He got radically born again during this time frame. I'm talking, people say he's saved now, but he becomes really on fire for Jesus, for what I saw coming. In the house that you call white Shall receive a man at night Fought for you In your night Scriptures tell us, so prophecy is telling us that we're going to have a man that fights for us day and night He's going to come in the house uh, that's white. And most importantly, what's it telling us? That he comes back for a second term because he gets two terms, but a praying president baptized in fire. What just happened when he went down? Shoes flew off. Uh, Jonathan Kahn did a great thing that's actually scriptural by piercing the right ear. I forget what scripture that is, but by the right ear being pierced, that is scriptural and that sets him apart. Clear, let me repeat that. Trump's right ear being pierced in blood set him apart by the hand of God. And now he's going to do his part and he's going to fulfill prophecy. The more exciting part is if you interlace Trump being on um, Moses being on Sinai and coming down and then what followed the 10 plagues. So Trump coming, getting baptized in fire and there are specific clippings of Trump specifically looking different. Okay. And it actually says these were news clippings. If you want to go stick this on, this is literally a news clipping Check this out. Put this up, Manny. These are news clippings. Trump born again. I should have been dead. These are news clips. In the Australian, Trump born again. If you compare and you replay, so this is a type and shadow, because Manny, what have you and I been talking about? A freedom from bondage. Where have we seen that before? Israel and Egypt. This is not going to be the exodus. It will be the great one. It will be the great exodus, which means that mm. we're, we should see many types and shadows. Are you are you with me? So the yes, type yes. and shadow of Moses taking off his shoes, back going low, because you got to go low to go high. You We've talked about that. Unless Trump went low publicly, he can't go high. God can't raise him high. God took him low publicly. Now he's, mm. he got up. He was baptized in fire. 
that will actually fulfilled the prophecy three months prior of Brandon, a friend of mine, that we literally see spoke about this being he was he would he would find Jesus when he's on the ground. Mm. And then you and then specifically now, just a few days afterwards, you're saying he's born again. These are news clippings fulfilling prophecy. So now this is the fun part. If we are to step into the great exodus, what's the starting point of the of exodus? What was the starting point? Moses going up Sinai and coming down. Right, right, right. Wow. And then what wow. happens right after that? Ten plagues. Okay, so are we going to have ten plagues? I don't know. I'm just telling you, Julie Green prophesied about the water in Egypt turning red. She's got a prophecy about that. God spoke through her and said, "The water, when the water turns red, I've got the exact wording, when you see the water turn red or the ocean or sea turn red, know that we're here. Well, what was the first plague? Water turning red. So keep your eyes open because... God spoke through Julie. He's going to turn the water red. I, that was two years ago, the prophecy. So what I'm saying is that we've had the start because Trump got baptized in fire and he pierced his right ear, setting him aside. Go listen to Jonathan Kahn did a beautiful job explaining that. Trump is now set aside and now Kim Clement said he comes in a praying president. So all we're missing is, you know, the summers, we're now in the summer's the mediator. So the fall can do its work in America. Summer's the mediator. Well, think about this, right? How wild, how wild are the things going on in the world? You've got the Trump presidency coming to an end when? It came to an end on right here, January 20th, Manuel, 2021. Okay. Okay, why? Why did Trump's presidency come to an end on January 20th, 2021? The inauguration, okay? So that was the Biden inauguration. So right. Biden gets inaugurated on January 20th, 21, which means Trump literally's got to step aside, okay? But there's actually prophetic voices that uh, Kim Clement also said that Trump would be set aside for a season, would be set aside. Well, what's a season using biblical scriptures? A season is not three months. Could be if you want three and a half months if you want it to be. But really a season, when God speaks of a season, he's speaking of a timeline. Well, you want a timeline? Pull up Daniel 12, 7. Because Daniel 12, 7 says, it shall be for time, times, and a half a time, which is three and a half years, Manuel. Okay, so... Whoa. If I'm if I'm right, because you know Jesus' ministry from the time he got baptized to death on the cross was what? Three and a half years. So Jesus' ministry was a season. Jesus' ministry was a season. No different, and that was it. Now, no different than here, the Biden presidency was for a season. So if the calculation is true and prophecy is true, and, and biblically we're in biblical times, what it's saying is that Daniel 12 is telling us. Daniel 12 verse 7 is telling us that the Biden presidency, something historic, mm. is expected to happen three and a half years later. Well, three and a half years later was July 20th, 2024, last month, two weeks ago. What happened on July 20th? Well, the next morning, Biden releases a press release that he steps down from the, inaugural, from the presidential race to the exact day. Manuel, to the exact day. To the exact day. To the exact wow, day. and then the and then the Daniel cycle of time of prophecy has a forty-five day window, which doesn't start until September third. Which means that this is indicating that the, uh, the the final completion of the seven years since the Biden presidency and since evils come into office, that cycle of three and a half fully is complete by the start of September, specifically if you want to throw a date on it, the calculation is the third. What that means, I don't know. I'm just doing the calculation. But what it, what the calculation, the bigger picture of the calculation is telling us, Manuel, that starting September onwards is the next, let's just have fun here, okay, is the next mm -hmm. season of three and a half and a three and a half, so the next seven years. So basically the next season starts in September. 
Well, let me tell you, when God wow. speaks of seasons, if, see, if, if Jesus says, think about that season of time, God's, Jesus is Christ's season from baptism to death on the cross. That was, that was, think about the power of that season, right? The greatest time in human history when Jesus is on the earth ministering, right? But then it came to an end suddenly when he died on the cross. You get what I'm saying? The point yes. of that conversation is everything changed. He rose from the dead, but the point is then it was the next season, and that was the time of the apostles, and now them doing their part. See, so everything changed. So if the calculation's true, what it now appears to be, September brings the start of something. The or You can only use the word, the three-letter word. The only word you can use is new. Something new. And if that be the case, what summer is the mediator? Well, what's it the mediator of? It's a transition point. It's a transition point of what? Between the end of something old, Babylon, wow. and the birth of something new, God's kingdom. Are you with me? So think yes. about how all of this is playing out. And then furthermore, you want to throw a, throw a let's throw a scripture on this. Let's read Matthew 24, because what are they threatening us with right now, Manuel? War, right? Every, I literally got an email this morning talking about the Ezekiel prophecy, and that basically talking about World War III. People, that's what happens when people don't, when people read scriptures and don't understand the timing, because the Ezekiel war is, we're talking World War III coming up, okay? We're not stepping into World War III. Manny will agree with me because why? God's going to make a window for his bride because the bride doesn't get beat up into a wedding. Those are not my words. They're Man Manny's words. Manny says God will not allow the God's bride to be beat up. I, I, you know what? I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you. When. When people walk in the spirit of fear, look, look at this picture. Look, look at this right here. I don't know. Can you see the arrow? Brother Bo, can you see the arrow? Look at this. Okay. I don't know if Bo can circle this, the, the lady right now. It looks like it's a lady with her hair. Right. What you're looking over. at there is a woman giving birth. So she's in labor. Okay. So she's in labor. Oh. Why would I have that? Because very simply, when you look at the arrow, it's a, it's a woman concerned what is she concerned about? About, about she, she's never given. This is her first child. She's giving birth to, but what's being birthed, right? So read Matthew twenty four. So now continue because this is all about Matthew twenty four. Be not deceived. The end is not what many. The end is not. It's not yet. Yet. It's not yet. Yet. These are the beginnings of. Birth, birth pains. pains so that's why this woman she's concerned because she's never given birth before so she's about to give birth and she's like how much is this going to hurt i don't know but it's really painful right now and so this is the wars rumors of wars it's scary it's concerning and then suddenly it's the greatest celebration because it's over and the child's born. But that's why you read Matthew 24, and we're about to witness the fall of Babylon, which is birth pains. And then once the child is born, it's the greatest celebration you've ever seen. But all the pain you had suddenly is like gone because a child's in your hand. You see, that's describe that further, Manny, about what it says in Matthew 24, because I'm not making this up. It's scriptural. So, so listen, saints, one of the things they asked Jesus, they, the first thing they asked Jesus was about the end times. And they wanted to know. Jesus said the first, first thing is, do not be deceived. So deception, deception, deception. Deception cannot work unless fear is in motion. When fear is in motion, you can deceive people. And then they make emotional decisions that they shouldn't make. The birth pa pains, God's, you know, God is showing us that these are birth pains. We're living in a season of birth pains. So we'll see wars and rumors of wars. We'll see certain things. What the Lord said, do not fear. The time is not yet. We are not in the beginning nor middle 
are in of the tribulation. There are going to be people that are going to say we are. No. Our scripture, my Bible, and I believe yours says it, right interpretation, that God is going to receive a bride without spot, without wrinkle. We are not going to be hurt, beat up, tore up, burnt out, burnt in, however you want to call it. We're going to be in great position when, when it's time for us to go. Either look, either Jesus comes down or we go up. We go up. But what I'm trying to say is it has to be that season. It has to be that season. We're not there yet. Even if you look towards the um, Jewish calendar, you know how you know how we are off about 220 years before the completion okay of the but let me let me pause you there manny because that jewish calendar has been totally tweaked and lied so, so just right. let's be okay. so okay let's leave it at we're, we're still years away and that'll be a great well, place years away. yes yeah we're, we're in agreement on away. that completely god years has away. to god has to do a good work in us He's going to do okay. The bride of Christ is not leaving scared. We're not leaving in fear. That's not going to happen. And the the Bible calls the devil the prince of fear. Okay? That's why we call the media the media knights. What does it do? Seducing spirits. That's what they did and did, and they do it now. He's raising up soldiers, priests, kings, rulers. He's raising us up. The Bible says we are to occupy in the name of Jesus, not flee. God's not coming to save us. He's coming for a victorious bride. He's given oh. us his blood. So why should we flee? We're here to occupy. So the pre-trib stuff is a bunch of garbage from the That's pits it. of hell. <laughs> you know what? I you know what? Bo, say it again. We are here to what? Occupy. 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 Have, occupy. Are, occupy. In the, the name of Jesus. Okay, you ready for this? We are to be the light and the salt. We cannot hide our light under the bed. The salt cannot lose its flavor or it will be what? Trampled. The, by the Lord says that. Jesus never hid from the enemy. What was happening? Both probably it was actually heard fun. Every time Jesus would show up and they, the Pharisees would show, would show up, they would freak. They were, because Jesus knew what to say and he knew what they were thinking and so they couldn't stand him because never once could they bring him down. God always had the precise, perfect answer and that's why evil just literally freaked. This is important. Evil freaked out every time Jesus would appear. We don't, we, you know, Jesus calls us to stand. Read Ephesians. It, it talks about when the wicked one rises up, when the wicked man one is throwing fairy dots, he says, stand, stand, stand. That's, and he says, if we resist the enemy, he is the one that flees. You ready for this, Bo? I'm like, I, Bo, I hope you use this, Bo, on your live stream. He says, resist the enemy, book of James, and he will flee. When is a flea? What did they call him in the Bible? Belzebar, the Lord of the Flies, resists the devil, and he will what? Flee. Oh my God. <laughs> you see, you and I, we're called the head, not the tail. Where does a flea like to hang out hang out? Near the tail. <laughs> okay. We're the head. What does the head do? What does the head don't do? Ready for this, brother Bolt? You never quit while you are ahead. Gotta say it again. You never quit while you're ahead. Come on. Heads well, are not and, quitters. And let me ask you a question, Manny. So if, if scripture says we are to be the head, not the tail. That's right. We're not the head right. I get what I'm saying. Like, we're not in control of the financial system yet. 
You see what I'm saying? Because it says Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner, is, which is the global elite, is stored up for the righteous. That hasn't happened yet. We are to be the head, not the tail. Well, right now, with a financial system, Babylon's financial system, you know, think about how many people are listening to this podcast, living check to check. If you're living check to check, you're not the head, you're the tail. That's not a, that, I'm not wow. giving you, I'm, I'm not being offensive to you. What I'm saying is that the devil, Satan, call him who he is, flipped the tables on, on us over the past hundreds and thousands of years, and he became the debtor. He turned us into the debtors, but we are to be the creditors. Who are the creditors? The creditors are the head, not the tail. You see, so the financial system, and what I'm saying is the Babylonian system is a, everything is opposite, right? So we are to be the head, not the tail in God's kingdom. But in Babylon's kingdom, we are the tail because Satan's and his, and his minions who bow down to him are the head. Why? Because Adam and Eve, gave Satan the ability to do it. Legal authority was given to Satan by Adam and Eve to then allow and allow these people to bow down before Satan and they become kings on the earth. And so they run a monetary system out of thin air, not God's money. It's a digital fake paper money system that enslaved us. And so right. Babylon's system is a opposite system to God's system of honest ledger. You got to understand that. The financial system we're presently using is a fraud, but not only is it a fraud, it's an opposite system to God's honest money system. That's why Nixon detached it from gold in the 70s, because if it was attached, they couldn't create money to infinity, which is what they're doing right now. So you have to really remember Babylon's financial systems, how they built Babylon with the money, the money system c controls humanity, us, and in that system, they're the head, we're the tail. But Scripture says we win. Scripture says we are to be the head, not the tail. Scripture says the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. And all I know is that God's word will not come back void. And all I know is I'm that hasn't happened yet. And now we're talking about the fall of Babylon Summer is the mediator between spring and fall, so the fall can do its work in America. The calculation on Daniel 12, 7 says, beginning in September, God's kingdom begins to rise. So we start seeing a birth of something new, what you're staring at, a new era in time. Because God's era cannot stand in Babylon. Babylon cannot stand while God is kingdom is alive, is being birthed. So we're going to see the birth of God's kingdom. The transition point is September. That's going to lead us into the end of the year. Manny had a prophecy. We thought for a couple of years this could have happened, but it hasn't. But Manny basically was saying Christmas in November. Okay. Well, there's an I interesting prophecy, which I basically had pulled up here. And what does it say? It's, this is a Kim what? Clement prophecy. He talks about hypnotic November. This is specifically a prophecy about November um, from the year 2005, like 19 years ago, okay? What does it say about, about November? It says, this day I have brought this nation into a whole brand new place in the kingdom. Wait a sec, what kingdom is this? What did we say earlier? What's going to be birthed? God's kingdom. Get it? So God's going to bring us into a whole new place in this kingdom. What kingdom? Well, specifically the birth of the new era, God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come. So let's listen. To, again, let's stick with precise understanding of the prophetic word. Because if this day I have brought this nation into a whole brand new place in the kingdom. How cool is that? Right? Do you understand that you have come through? You've been through August, September, and October, and now I'm going to take you into four years of harvest that to a magnitude degree that the world has never seen or experienced before. You will go into November and I will bring victory upon victory upon victory upon victory. Why did Manny get a prophecy about Christmas in November? I don't know, but I do know Kim Clement prophesied hypnotic November. I read you three prophecies.
is wow. right there that talk about something victory upon victory upon victory starting in the month of November. But he said also, you've been through September, October, and November. What does that mean? You've been through August, September, and October. Well, think about that. What would the calculation say? The calculation actually indicated what? What did the Daniel 12, 7 calculation indicate? Beginning on September 3rd, we start something new. So I don't know what's going to happen September 3rd, 4th, whatever. All I'm saying is that we're going to see an intervention this year. We're supposed to potentially right. see things trigger, start possibly in what month? It's supposed to, something supposed to begin in the month of September. And then that leads me to this prophecy, which I want to pop up on the screen here. But have a listen and just think about what this prophecy is saying and how interesting all of this is. All of this is with specifically relation to the timeline I just laid out. So go ahead and, and play this prophecy, man, if you can pop it up on the screen. Make sure you guys can hear it. But think about what I laid out with Daniel 12, 7 since the inauguration. The final calculation shows up September 3rd, so let's say the beginning of September. And then let's listen to this prophecy and have a listen. Here you go. But this is for you, says the Lord. The tide is turning for you. A very strange thing shall happen in September. Moving into the fall where there shall be a great fall. Fall of the enemies, fall of kings, fall of princes. Watch and see. For God says beginning in September, I will turn everything around. And my people shall see an intervention of a kind that they have never seen before. Whoa. Look at that. Uh, with this, this is such biblical times. Saints, Bo was speaking earlier, and he was right. Uh, look, God doesn't call you and I to sit there to be budgeting every month, check to check. Not check to check, glory to glory. What does Paul, Apostle Paul said? I go from glory to glory. Not check to check, our fear to fear. We go to glory to glory. This year has been an exciting historic year. Transitioning, as I said in the beginning, it's a year of transitioning for positioning from God's house to the White House, from biblical to political, whatever you, how you call it. We're in the year of transitioning for positioning. The, the, the seven influence mountains are going to be occupied with God's people. I didn't say all of the mountains, all of God's people. Of course, you're going to get the world there, but God's people are going to occupy, but they're going to be in a different position. When Joseph went to the palace, he was in a different position. God had to put him in a position to where he was what? honored and respected understand that there could have been people in time of joseph that feared the lord but joseph was raised up to power as being honored and respected to where now pharaoh is not listening to his advisors he's listening to joseph this is a position god is putting us in in the seven mountains of influence so i'm asking to prepare yourself for that but for that to happen, there has to be a shakening in the world. It has to be. What? Why did Pharaoh ask Joseph for advice? Because Pharaoh had a shakening dream about what? The economy of Egypt. He had a crazy dream about the economy of Egypt. And who had the answers? Not the world, not the advisors, but a lonely man in prison. Exactly. And God, where was Joseph in th at that time? He was in prison. He, he lost his freedom. He wasn't in good clothes. But the minute 
he stepped into the palace and gave a two or three minute advice to Pharaoh. There was a change of clothes. There was a change. All of a sudden, there was, he had a chain of jewelry. He had an authority he had never had in Egypt. He was only, he was only over the prison. Now he was over Egypt. That's promotion. Because he stood the test. He stood the test. He what? Come on. Waved it out. He waved it out. I don't know. See, Bo's been busy, so I don't know if he got my last prophecy that I gave five days ago about no. what was about to happen. Bo no. did not know this. Okay, he said no. Bo, are you ready for this? Yes, please. I gave a prophecy five days ago that I saw a wave in the cryptocurrency. And I said, something's about to happen. And I said, I saw a wave in the crypt this was in the middle of the live stream it wasn't part of what god had given me in, in the prior i stopped what i was doing and i said god just gave me a download it was five days ago that i saw the cryptocurrency market wave it went down 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 and then now i don't know how long it stayed down for but then it started to go up 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 and you know there was more to it and i continue to repeat that and many of the saints that are watching now they got that prophecy it was five days ago five days ago and so <coughs> we're seeing the fulfillment taking place did i know it was going to happen five days later no i did not but it came it is coming to pass so we're getting these things we're getting these things this last prophecy i spoke about i don't think bo got it was about also gold and silver okay so if bo didn't get it a few days he didn't get it he's gonna get it now all right, yeah. all right go ahead yeah i want to hear what you gotta say please so so i saw that so in that wave i saw gold silver and other economies shift and change they went up 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 they went up 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 now the gold for my this is probably the second time that i saw this the silver and copper was following behind it but these people that had and obtained this were in very good position they were in a better position than a lot of people. I'm me, me and Bo, we're not trying to be a financial advisor. But when I see it, and I saw it, and I told my wife about it, I said, oh boy, this thing's going to hit like somebody's in Las Vegas and they get 777. This thing's going to hit. So, let me, tell you about right eight, eight, let me tell you about 888 in a minute, but go ahead. Let's let's finish up. So let me tell you this while Bo is here. This part I haven't released yet, but God would have me to release it. I have it here. Okay? I saw three waves. Now, I have not released this yet. I was going to release it on a different live stream, but this Bo is here. I got to release it. I saw three waves of silver. Bang, yes. bang, bang. It's true. Actually, I've already got that in my, in my cycle work. Really? There's three waves coming. The first I wave is in September. Yeah, so the first wave is in September. I saw three waves of silver. Yes. Bang, bang, bang. Yep, absolutely. I'm getting the Holy Ghost goosebumps yep. again. Whoa. Those three waves happen into year end. So it's going to be wild. So it's coming. All of this is set up. It's all set up. So actually, it's very interesting you said that because actually I specifically have three waves in my cycle work. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, so actually, since we're there, let's listen to this prophecy. Have a listen, and you'll see what's going on in the markets right now. So we want to touch base in the markets as well, so people can understand what is happening in the markets. Oh my gosh, the stock market's going to collapse, fall apart. People, listen. All of this is perfect timing. Let me explain. Have a listen here. The markets are supposed to go down beginning Monday. I said last week, listen to interviews I did. Specifically, the markets were supposed to collapse on Monday. They did. Have a listen. 
So what I'm seeing right now on the chart patterns uh, potentially is not only stock market, but basically gold, silver, cryptocurrencies next week, especially like precious metals, cryptocurrencies, therefore including the stock market, basically everything from the patterns, it looks like we are crashing into Thursday roughly. Okay, so next so week's going to be a tough week. Yeah, let's just leave. that's a great way of putting it. Next is going to be a tough week, and I would take that into a very awesome time point. This coming week is a very important time point. This Thursday, August 8th, 2024. If you add up 224, right, you get another 8. So it's 888. 888 cycle is saying that something could shift by the end of this week. Summer, take it. For thus says the Lord, I will prosper my people. I will prosper my people. Wow. Yeah. The great yeah. wealth and the summer I will prosper my people. The great wealth transfer begins in summer. The stock market's not collapsing, people, okay? What's happening is perfect. It's called a flush. They play the game in August. They see all the stops. They hammer everybody's stops. So that means if you're what, net uh, long. Will you, uh, um, Bo, normally I don't interrupt. Will you say that again? The stock market is not what? The stock market is not collapsing, people. This is a, this is a flush you. out. It's a flush. What they do in August, they flush the market. So what they do, the globalists see all the positions that people hold, whether it's precious metal, stock market, and they basically, what they do is specifically, these people have stops. So so like, hey, I'm up X amount, but if it, if, if it hits this mark here, um, I want out. And so they see all the stops. And so there's billions, trillions of dollars of stops in precious metal, cryptocurrencies, gold and silver. They see all these stops and what they do, they flush the markets. What does that mean? They literally plunge the markets. Look what happened on Monday. Bitcoin dropped like five, six, seven thousand in a single day. You had, um, and what that did, it hit everybody's stops and flushed them out of the market. I'm going to repeat that. It flushed everybody out of the market. Everybody who's in the stock market, when it dropped like that, it flushed them out of the stock market. After the flush is when the great bull market begins because they don't want anybody on a leveraged position going to the upside. So then your bull market begins to the upside, which is going to start here as into end of August into September. Very interesting time point, this 888, this Thursday coming up. But we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But the markets will turn and then they start going up. So September, the markets are, they're not crashing. Go look at 1929. The crash didn't, ha didn't start until October. Go look at the crash of 2008. The market didn't start to crash until October. You see, so we're not seeing a market crash coming. It was a perfect flush. It's like it's it's like the poker. It's a royal flush. You know, they know that they play that flush card. They're gonna wipe everybody out of the markets, and then it, and then the globals take the markets up. That's all that happened. Wow. That's all well, that happened. You couldn't, have, you, couldn't have, you couldn't have explained it any better. The Saints, <laughs> okay, write this thing out. Write this thing out like the Lord showed me. Okay, write this thing out. I'm going to tell you something. Oh, actually, let me pause. Before you say oh, something, oh, Manny, oh, sorry, oh, before oh, you say oh, that oh, thing, oh, before you oh, say oh, that oh, thing, and all this creates is a huge awesome buying opportunity because you get it cheaper for those who haven't done anything about precious metals yet. Please continue, Manny. I, I, see, Bo didn't know this. I said, Saints, this is not an opposition. This is an opportunity. Oh, such an opportunity. I saw two platforms. I saw millionaires overnight. I saw billionaires overnight. I saw millionaires overnight. I saw billionaires all night. I saw the wealth of the wicked going to the just. Scripture being fulfilled as God's kingdom is birthed. Babylon falls. The light exposes. The deal's done in darkness. I've said on Elijah's stream. I've said on your channels. Every channel I've ever been on. I said God's kingdom will rise only with his money. And when his money rises, God's kingdom is rising. That's the birth of God's kingdom. We're going to see silver go double, triple overnight from like 20s into the 60s overnight. 
Gold's going to go from 2000 to 4000 overnight in a single day. And that only starts the greatest bull market in human history. What's a bull market? A market which is exploding vertical and has nothing but higher highs and higher lows. And Manny nailed it. God showed you. It's three, it's three waves to start off with. Three waves are coming. And there, each wave is a bull market is a higher high. So these three waves are going to go higher and higher and higher. So as high as the first wave go goes, that's only damages. That's sevenfold. Then we go into blessings, 30, 60, 100 fold. People, you don't even know what's coming. But when God intervenes, it's biblical. Saints, you can't go wrong. The good news is the God's news. You are ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game. Okay? You are ahead of the game. It is not the don't, it's not the panic button. It's the praise button. It's the peace button. It's like, Lord, wow. God is positioning us to be the head, to be the lender. Come on. He's positioning us. And we must take that window. There is always a window on opportunity. We have to take it. With that being said, Bo, how can they connect with you? How can they connect with you? Yeah, website gold, right behind me there, gold2020forecast.com. The beginning of the end, not the great tribulation. So Maddie and I are completely good. We're not, we're not in tribulation, people. We're only Thank you. Are, scripturally, where this is scriptural, okay? These are these are specifically the time of sorrows. This is the time where things are beginning. So we're seeing things begin upon the earth. It began in 2020. If you go back 400 years, you get to the Mayflower. So you get to the Mayflower 400 years, you get to 2020. You add another three and a half years, you get to July. 20, 2024, last two weeks ago. So 400 years plus a season, boom, now. So we're about to see something huge transition. It's the mediator season, the transition window. So my website, yeah, gold2024cast.com. Website, YouTube, you put my name in on YouTube. But what a biblical time we, we live in. You know, I cover all these, all these, if people want more information, uh, I like you showed earlier, I've got the book. God literally told me, you know, put this book out. But it's very interesting. From the day I met the publicist, Manuel, to the day it first shipped was exactly seven months to the exact day. Wow. Like, Look think, th no one planned that. And I just looked back, wait a second, when do we have a publicist? It was exactly seven months to the exact day. I'm showing you. God's revealed some incredible things to me, in the, which I stuck in that book. The reviews are off the charts. People are, are submitting and, and emailing to me specifically. So, you know, if you want to get the book, just go to my website. Uh, it is available on Amazon. Uh, if you do go to my website, use the code triple seven 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 seven, and you will get a thirty percent discount on it. Also, you don't need to buy the book on Amazon, but you can if you want. But go to Amazon. There's so many awesome people emailing me, but no one's actually went to Amazon and actually put a review about the book on Amazon. So you don't even need to buy the book on Amazon, but just go to Amazon and just get the algorithms going. But just um, if you got the book, literally just uh, write a review right on Amazon. You can do it there. And it will be uh, you know fantastic for the algorithms of what they're telling me. But most importantly, you know, the book is extremely doing really well right now anyways. Uh, but again, the book just it outlines what you and I talked about today. And it just yes. takes it into further detail. And it takes it, again, into the future. Because again, nothing's random. Look at the calculation I showed you in Daniel 12, 7. How is that possible that Biden stepped down to the exact day at three and a half years. It's possible because it's by design. Wow. God's design. That, 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 no, that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Saints, Donna Rickney called me a few days ago and she said, let the people know that we're going to be in Minnesota. Brother Bo, Brother Manny, Sister Donna, and Brother Nathan. We're going to be in Minnesota, all of us together. You know, so, you know, that's that's fire within itself. <laughs> That'll be a good time. Don't miss that one. <laughs> that's right. Don't miss it. All righty. And those of you, in two weeks, come in the toys. I want to see you. Be a part of that. So many wonderful things take place. So many testimony. We want to see you come and be a part of that. Be a part of it. 
I mean, it's just, it's, it's nothing like it. I just know the presence of, oh my gosh. So say, you know how much you're loved. You are loved so much. As my dear friend Julie says, God loves you. I love you. <laughs> but I always say, saints, the good news is the God news. God's, God's news is the good news. The yeah. Lord wants you to be ahead of the times. Okay. This is some great things that are taking place in our nation. Be a part of it. Stay close. The scripture says, believe the word of God. Come on. And you will be established. Believe his prophets. And you will prosper. We're going to see you next time here on Behind the Scenes. Always love to have you. Love to have you, brother. Bo, and love to have you, saints. Love you. Love you. Love you.